The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from California, Mrs. Ms. Brownlee, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to pay my respects to the greatest generation of American heroes by honoring our courageous veterans of World War II, in particular those who took part in the Normandy landing on June 6, 1944. On that historic day, 160 160,000 Allied troops landed on the 50-mile stretch of beaches along the Normandy coast, commencing the largest amphibious assault ever of continental Europe. Their mission was clear, to gain a foothold from which to fight Nazi Germany and defeat Adolf Hitler. With more than 5,000 ships and 13,000 aircraft, the Allied forces succeeded, but 9,000 patriots were killed or wounded in battle. The bravery and heroism of those Americans and our allies when they stormed the French coastline was most definitely the turning point of the war. And they could not have done it without the extraordinary work of the Seabees. During World War II, around 175,000 Seabees were staged directly through Port Wyneme in Ventura County. The Seabees, who were recruited for their civilian construction skills, laid the groundwork for D-Day. On that historic day, the Seabees were among the first to go ashore as members of the Naval Combat Demolition Units. Working with the U.S. Army engineers, they destroyed the steel and concrete barriers that the Germans had built along the Normandy coast to forestall an amphibious landing. Coming under fire at dawn, whole teams of Seabees were wiped out by the Germans, but their fellow servicemen continued their life-threatening task of planting all of their explosive charges. Because of their heroic actions, the charges went off as planned, blowing huge holes in the enemy's defense. But the CB's contributions to D-Day didn't stop there. After the Allied fleet arrived off the coast of Normandy, Naval Construction Regiment 25, a team of around 10,000 Seabees moved their platoon causeways to create a beachhead from which the Allied infantry could land ashore. Then after the unheralded yet no less heroic work of the Seabees was complete, our troops and tanks went ashore took back Normandy, and drove the Germans inland. We remember and honor those hero heroes who gave their lives for us, and we thank the brave men and women who served our country, returned home, and helped the U.S. become the indispensable leader of liberty and freedom. Many, us, many of us have family members who fought in World War II, including my Uncle Pete, who served in the Army. Of the 16 million Americans who served in World War II, just over a million of them are still alive, with around 93,000 in my home state of California. Seven decades later, we are rapidly losing this greatest generation. So it is of the utmost importance that we continue to show our gratitude and appreciation for their sacrifices by recording their oral histories with honor flights and by ensuring that they live their final years with digni dignity and respect and we shall never forget. As a member of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, I am committed to ensuring that the 20 million veterans in the United States receive the care and benefits they have earned and deserve. For everyone who donned the uniform from the World War II generation to the post 9-11 generation, I thank the World War II vet veterans in Ventura County and across the country for the sacrifices they and their families made to serve our great nation and for protecting our liberty and freedoms, our democracy at home, and our allies abroad. 
the example their generation has set for us of coming together as a nation with a common purpose is one we continue to aspire to today and one my colleagues and I on the House Veteran Affairs Committee emulate as we seek the best possible care for our veterans. I yield back the balance of my time.